appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak. Um, I am that guy there, Ted Peterzak. I am uh, head of technology from Gento based here in Boston. Um, Gento, as you may or may not know, is a uh, subsidiary of a subsidiary of eBay. Um, I've been with the eBay family companies for about eight years uh, in various roles with PayPal and then Magento. So what are we going to talk about tonight? A um, little introduction to Magento for those of you that don't know us. Uh, some history. Um, although I think Olga here probably is a better source of that than I am. We'll, we'll see how I did. Um, some talk about, I'll we'll talk for a few minutes about you know, where we in Magento see ourselves as being strong what our opportunities and areas for growth are. Um, and actually, we've had some interesting external insights into that uh, as part of some, uh, some spin-off activity that's going on uh, with eBay, PayPal, and eBay Enterprise right now. So uh, very meaningful to me in the moment. Uh, some challenges that we see uh, in Magento. And then, um, you know, I think uh, Logan suggested that we talk a little bit about performance. Um, so Magento 2. Performance has been a real area of focus for us. Um, we have some, some strong goals to, to try to hit, and we have uh, we have an opportunity, I think, with Magento 2 to really uh, deal with some perception issues that we have in the market around performance, and um, really kind of make our brand that much stronger by doing some work there. So I have a number of slides on that as well. So for those of you that don't know us, right, we are a high performance, highly scalable, open source e-commerce platform. Uh, we have a vibrant community of developers, system integrators, uh, people that are very passionate about Magento, people who are actually doing very well from a um, commercial standpoint around Magento. It's a really, it's a great group of people to work with. They contribute a lot, not just to Magento, but also to the people around them, right? It's a very well self-supported group. So we're very, it's very empowering to work with a group of folks like that. So a little bit about Magento and our position in the market. Um, in the IR500, we are the number two platform with 47 merchants. We're uh, up from number three um, since 2014. And you know, it's pretty exciting for us because we're moving out of the sort of lower end of the market up into the range of merchants where they're doing hundreds of millions of dollars in annual sales volume. Um, so, yeah. IR, Internet Retailer? Internet Retailer, probably. exactly. Um, so it's a big step up for us, right? And we're making steady inroads uh, year over year in that. It's something we're very proud of as an organization. So if you start looking at the Alexa 1 million, we have 30% of the market. So that makes us the number one e-commerce platform in the world right now, um, overall by install base. So, so Magento is a global company. Um, you know, we have, I guess, five major offices for Magento, right? Uh, Culver City in Los Angeles, um, Campbell in California, Sacramento. Our two main development centers are Austin, where we have about a third of our engineering team, and then Kiev, Ukraine, where we have about the other two thirds of our engineering team out there. Um, and we have a very broad distribution of solution partners around the world. Uh, we do. We are very strong in Europe uh, and in Australia. We're making some significant inroads in South America uh, as well. So if you just look at the um, kind of the history of Magento, uh, Roy Nilock founded Magento back in 2001. It was a consultancy doing, it's called Varian, it was a consultancy doing work in OS Commerce. Um, you know, in the course of doing that, they figured out that there's an opportunity for something better. I think Brian had mentioned that uh, OS Commerce may not have, may have encouraged some of that thought process. Anyway, um, so development on Magento started in 2006-2007 timeframe, and uh, the first stable release went out in 08 with a different name than it has now. Uh, later on in 08, there was a decision to change the name from Bento to Magento. Uh, first enterprise edition release happened in 2009, 
So for those of you that don't know, Magento has two versions. Um, there's what we call Community Edition, which is our fully open source version of Magento that you can go out on GitHub and help yourself to today. We also have what we call Enterprise Edition, which is our four fee product that we offer that has you know, services packaged around it and some additional functionality built in. Um, so uh, they launched that um, in 2010, eBay bought uh, just shy of half of Magento. Uh, for business reasons, they're very good. Um, at that time, Magento was PayPal's largest external source of transactions. Um, I think it's probably fair to say we were in around, in range of around three billion in transactions flowing through Magento into PayPal. So it made it a very key strategic acquisition for uh, eBay at that time. Um, we also will announced Magento Go and Magento 2 uh, in the same time frame. Early 2011, Magento Go, which was uh, Magento's SaaS platform, rolled out. Um, around the middle of 2011, eBay purchased the 51% of Magento that it didn't have and brought it fully into the family. Um, started, you know, things rolling along pretty good for Magento, a bunch of downloads out there. Um, and around, uh, despite the fact that we announced Magento 2 in uh, 2010, we really didn't get serious about it until 2013, the middle of 2013, where we made a real strategic decision inside the company to pivot our development efforts onto Magento 2 and really focus in on that, because that's where we thought we really had the, the best market opportunity and would make a difference. Um, late 2013, we became a subsidiary of a subsidiary of eBay. Um, we rolled in with eBay Enterprise. And then, um, you know, Magento 2 started to get some serious momentum. Uh, we launched our developer beta in late 2014. We had developer RC, developer release candidate earlier this year. So to translate that, that's basically our Magento 2 CE version. Um, we have Merchant Beta coming up in late July, which will be sort of our first release of Magento 2 Enterprise Edition. And we have a GA release for Magento 2 at the end of this year. So for us in Magento, it's a big year, right? Uh, this is, uh, this is where, the, where it really pays off for us on this one. So where are we strong? Well, I'll steal the slide from Roy, right? One of the decks he did. Um, Roy's since moved on, but uh, you know, if you look at where Magento is really successful in the market, where we have great value prop, it's really always been around the flexibility, right? Merchants, it's open source, right? Even if you buy EV edition, right? Obviously, it's PHP. You get the source code. You can do anything you want. You can integrate anything you want. You can build any user interface you want. That flexibility has been what really differentiated Magento from all the rest of the competition all the way through. And so one of the things that's come out of that is we, as I said, we have a really vibrant community, really vibrant ecosystem around it. If you look at the Magento Connect Marketplace, there's over 8,000 extensions, themes, and language packs out there that are available, either downloaded for free or, um, or for sale. Um, there's over a billion dollars in derived value for our community out there um, through all the different things, right? So it's extensions, themes, language packs, system integrators doing customizations for merchants. Um, it's a huge value prop for the people out there. So we talked about uh, some of the earlier stats on you know where we stand in the Alexa 1 million, uh, the IR 500. So we, there are over 240,000 Magento stores out there that we can identify with built with right now using publicly available data. So it's a huge install base for us. Uh, we do find that we're particularly strong in the fashion vertical, um, but you know, it's not an area we necessarily put a lot of focus on, it just happens to be one that's worked well for us. So opportunities for growth. So as I mentioned, right, we're part of eBay Enterprise. Um, if you're keeping up with what's going on in public, you know that eBay Enterprise is being spun out of eBay. And we spent a lot of time in the last couple of months going through due diligence, talking to a lot of really smart people, um, and getting feedback from them on where they see our strengths and weaknesses are, and kind of marrying that up with our own, um, our own roadmap, our own product. Um, 
And so I think generally uh, there's a couple of themes that are out there. You know, there's this move up market for us. We've been, we've been concentrated for the most part in merchants 50 million a year and under. Um, the, the general sense is with some additional feature and function, uh, we have an opportunity to move up market and start to take some of those larger accounts. Uh, we've gotten access to eBay Enterprise's sales channels. Um, they get into accounts that we can never get into as Magento because they're used to taking care of big merchants, um, big customers, and doing it, been doing it for a long time. Um, we've had an opportunity to build some really high volume referenceable implementations. Uh, for example, in Brazil, there's a company called Sariva, which is, um, I suspect, our largest installation by volume. So Sariva is a bookstore in Brazil. Um, they're essentially Brazil's Amazon. Uh, it's been enormously, enormously successful for us. And actually, some of the lessons and uh, learnings that we took about uh, that, we, that we got there about how they were able to build a system with Magento to take those kind of, the kind of volumes that they've seen um, has fed back into Magento too and some of the architectural changes that we've made there. Um, and then double down on certain market segments, right? So put together some, some uh, feature packs or some deals with other customers that will let us really focus in on some areas like fashion where we're already strong. So this is an interesting one, right? Um, you may recall we had Magento Go, the um, SaaS solution, and you may also recall from that slide that we shut down Magento Go. Uh, it turns out SaaS isn't really um, a great place for Magento to be, because if you think about our, our strength, right, which is you can customize the snot out of it, right, you can do anything you want, but that doesn't play very well in the SaaS environment. Right? And in fact, in uh, our Magento Go environment, we had a total of 12 extensions that we could let customers use um, there because we we actually managed to maintain those 12 extensions as opposed to the 8,000 that are available to people that have standalone installs out there. So SaaS isn't really the right answer for Magento um, given our strengths. Um, so our, our, our path forward is going to be improve our cloud offerings through uh, perhaps modifications on our uh, deployment installation tools certainly through building some partnerships uh, with cloud providers out there um, and making sure that we're, we're well prepared to um, make changes, for example, to our licensing model right now, which discourage cloud deployments. So one of the things that's going great for us um, is in December of 2014, we really went to uh, a much better GitHub interaction model uh, for our CE edition. And we're starting to really see an increasing amount of traction with our community. People are engaging very actively with us in terms of posting issues, suggesting solutions, making suggestions for product changes. Uh, we've had a very nice number of pull requests come in, and the pace of that looks like it's going up slightly. And I, I think more importantly for us, right, the pull requests um, that we're starting to see now are starting to be much higher value added. Right? We're not seeing for example, spelling corrections and comments now as people suggesting meaningful, significant changes to the code base. Um, so I think that's very encouraging for us. Ah, challenges. So, I think you guys will appreciate this, right? We're, with Magento 2, um, we've made a lot of changes um, to our code base a lot of them around the areas of improving ways that people can customize Magento and it can do it in a fashion that is, um, let's say, same, right? With Magento 1, right, there weren't well-defined APIs or well-defined interfaces that you could customize on top of. If you wanted to do something, you just replaced a Magento class with one of your own implementation, right? Which made it difficult to upgrade. Uh, if you're writing an extension and you, and you modify a class, Another extension writer modifies the same class, you install both extensions, the results are bad. Right? So we're putting in um, a, much, uh, a much higher level of sophistication in our interfaces. Uh, we're putting actual interfaces in place. Um, some of the patterns that we're using, uh, dependency injection and interception, are new uh, to some of our partners out in the community. And so, for example, we've had a number of community members come back to us and say, well, you know, this feels a little computer science-y, or, um, 
<laughs> for being close. Um, we, had, we had another one come to us and literally say, look, I, I don't know, um, one of our largest partners, one of our largest extension providers came to us and said, I, you know, at the price point I'm willing to pay, I don't know if I can hire people that understand that level of program. Um, so it's an interesting conundrum for us, right? We, uh, we certainly want to support our community, but the, the truth of the matter is, I think um, the community is going to have to advance the state of the art a little bit. Right? And it's not going to be all that comfortable right, for some people. Yeah, we've also had a lot of positive feedback. There are a lot of people who really like what we're doing. Um, but you know, it's not universal. Right? There's some folks with some vested interests and a simpler code base. So I'm sure you guys have run into this, right? There's a, there's a perception of PHP, right? It's a scripting language, it's not compiled, it's not Java. Not sexy like Scala. It's not Ruby on Rails, right? And um, you know, when we go to do sales deals, in some cases, where we're selling into clients that have existing programming IT departments that maintain, they expect to maintain the system, they expect to do the customization. We sometimes run into people where they're saying, "No, we're Java shop, right? We don't want to move into the world of PHP. That's not our thing." We're, you know, that's one of the things that we're trying to counteract with a little marketing and a little, um, a little clever work uh, on our side, but it's a problem for us. Um, some shops, some places that we go into, we have to spend some time and effort sort of convincing people about the, uh, the maturity, the performance, and the, and the capabilities of PHP, right? It's not, always, it's not always an easy sell to a CIO in a large, uh, in a large retail organization. challenging for us. Um, our average time to fill a job here in the Austin job market is greater than 60 days. Um, you, know, you and everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, uh, yeah, it is, right? And, uh, you know, to put it in perspective, I think our, our average time to fill in Kiev is, uh, is around 40 days, right? So it's that much faster. So what uh, skill sets, is this like uh, mid-level or senior or across the range or entry level? So we do, uh, we do a lot better at filling our sort of entry to mid-level positions. We struggle, I think, like everyone else, to fill the more senior level positions. Okay. Um, and you know, some, of it, some of it probably is a perception of eBay as well, right? I'm sure there's a perception of us as a Java C++ shop in the market because, you know, shoot, when we opened up the eBay office here in Austin, that's what we pitched ourselves as, right? So we have, to, we have to put a little work into overcoming that as well, right? Some of that's kind of self-inflicted injury. So, the open source community has been awesome for us, right? It's been powerful, it's been, um, it's been a big selling point, and frankly, when we're doing, going through the due diligence process, right, the open source nature of the product um, and the strength of the community has been perceived by everyone as a real value add. But, there's some strong opinions out there, and it's not always fun. Um, we take regular meetings on our selection of less over SAS for a CSS preprocessor. Um, you know, we made the choice for good reasons a couple of years ago, but that hasn't stopped anybody from piling on. There's some very emotional, uh, very emotional discussions going on around that in social media. All right, so let's get to the, the, the meaty part of the discussion tonight. So we talked about Magento performance. Um, you know, Magento One. Uh, there's some perception in the market that um, it's hard to scale Magento One. It's hard to get performance out of Magento One. Um, some of it's true. Some of it is. Uh, <clears throat> some of it's a little artificial. Um, if you if you look at our licensing model, right? We've licensed on a per server basis, not a per CPU or per transaction or utility model or something like that. And so people that are running high volume chops find themselves having to sort of twist themselves in a knot, you know, buying this hugest piece of hardware they can so they can run four or five Magento instances on one server to work around their licensing model. Right, so that's kind of a self-inflicted problem that we have to get around. Especially for PHP. Yeah. So the first question when you look at uh, performance in Magento is, um, 
you know, the basic application of the ship performs reasonably well, right? And so you always, when you look at a performance problem, it is, is it us, the application, or is it something that they did, right? Um, not everyone makes great choices when they implement. Uh, I, haven't seen a, I haven't seen anything worse than one of the shops we had on Magento Go where they literally had a thousand images on their home page. It was awesome. It actually it actually produced a negative impact on the whole ghost service. Uh, <laughs> now some of that, yeah, anyway. Um, so it's a brand risk for us, right? Because if somebody sees a poorly performing shop out there and says, um, wow, that's built with Magento, that must be a Magento problem, right? How do we protect ourselves from that? Um, and it and it is an issue. I'll, if you're interested in a Q&A session, I can point you to a Magento shop right now that has a not very nice set of performance characteristics um, that have, you know, really nothing to do with the application. Right? Um, so anyway, uh, you know, one of the things that we're doing out there is the published performance test toolkit. We have some standard merchant sizes, small, medium, and large, so you can pre-populate some data. You can run the performance tests against your installation of Magento and compare them to our reference results. And you can start to find out where the problem really is, right? And it's kind of a, you know, it's really brand protection for us. So, Magento 2, the performance journey. Um, so we started out focused on architectural changes for Magento 2, you know, putting these nice interfaces in place. And, you know, at some point we have to kind of transition into how are we gonna, how are we gonna approach our performance because when we started measuring it, right, which is, as you all know, if you've done this, challenging in its own right, um, we saw that Magento 2 initially was significantly slower than Magento 1 uh, in nearly every aspect of, of any, reasonable, any reasonable use case. Uh, and so, you know, we start the usual way, right? Server-side profiling, let's go with our database queries, we have redundant database queries, can we make some objects smaller so we don't have to initialize the universe whenever we come in with a request? Um, you know, can we cut some logic out that we don't really need, right? Um, but it wasn't enough. Right? When we ran our performance numbers and looked at them, like, wow, we're still not quite there yet. Right? We made some nice progress, but we're not home. So, you know, there's a tendency when you're thinking about performance in any application to equate performance with server-side response. And when you're, when you're looking at a web application, well, that's nice, right? It doesn't really convey um, what the consumer's experience is or what the user of the application's experience is. So if you do a little research, you'll see that around 70% of your overall time is spent rendering in the browser. So when we started looking at how to attack this problem with Magento 2, we had to take a bigger picture view and start thinking about, okay, what's going on on the browser side? What can we do thinking outside of the server, thinking at the system level, right? Can we, can we improve our caching? Um, can we uh, optimize processing on the client side? Can we do things uh, asynchronously on the client side, right, to make that that end user experience better. And the answer to that is yes, we can. So part of this is changing our performance benchmarking environment so that we actually have a way to measure what's going on on the browser side as well. Um, and part of it is some of the optimization that I discussed. Um, the net results for us have been pretty spectacular. If you look at just any of our catalog browsing scenarios, right? You go to a home page, browse to a product, you do a search, um, add a product to a cart, right? We've been able to make significant improvements in the overall consumer experience by focusing on the whole thing, right? The holistic thing, getting outside of the server. We have some work to do. Oh, go ahead. There's the charts that we're looking at. Uh, can you describe what kind of server this is running on, uh, um, what kind of traffic, what kind of load we're looking at to see these numbers? I mean, is this one user running on a yeah. you know, shared server? What is this? Um, so I can. I have, I'll have to pull up another deck at the, uh, at the end of this, if you don't mind holding off for that. 
but I'm happy to happy to talk to you about our server config um, on this one. Uh, for in terms of traffic, we're running uh, four JMeter threads, I think. And if you look at you know, it's with no pauses built in. So the thought is those are equivalent to around uh, eight to twelve users per thread. And I think when you look at it, you'll see the hardware is not, uh, you know, we're not running this on, on a tray, for example. You found, um, you mentioned, you know, getting into Redis and Varnish and mm -hmm. tuning the whole experience. You found that also. It is a problem with the, I can't afford to, now I have to pay a computer science engineer to work on it. And I have to pay a DevOps guy to manage the Varnish <laughs> cache. Yeah, I mean, I, so we haven't, we haven't really pushed this out into production yet. So you know, we're dealing with Magento 2, dealing primarily with our, with our SIs and our, and our developer community. Um, so I think it's, you know, the jury's still out on that one. Um, having said that, right, we certainly, you know, we, rely, we do rely heavily on caching, right, as you, as you note there. Um, and we certainly have had to make some changes in our developer experience because developers can't necessarily rely on that caching for performance, right? And we certainly, uh, earlier, late last year and early this year, had some uh, uh, not great experiences for our developer community around that. Anyway, it could be that that's what comes, right? We could get the computer science -y tag again uh, on that one. So we talked about this, right? We we're, we're spending a lot of effort. We spent a lot of effort initially on kind of the front end of the process, right? User browsing around. Um, now we're, we're spending a lot of focus on improving our checkout experience for consumers, making that faster. Um, and that work is, uh, you know, we'll have that wrapped up by the time we go out in beta or significant amount of it. Um, I don't have updated, uh, updated metrics on that yet, but um, now you can see when we, when we did this run in uh, April, we, um, uh, we got pretty good results out of it compared to Magento 1, which was our benchmark. And we think we have some very significant improvements coming forward based on that. So, you know, the other, uh, the other things that we're looking at um, are more technology related. So, uh, the Zen folks, uh, Andy Guzman and this team, um, have engage with us to make sure that Magento works well with PHP 7. Um, if you're keeping track, PHP 7 is coming out late this year about the time our GA is. We'd like to be able to support PHP 7 or say that we are supported by PHP 7 when we go out the door with a GA release. Um, early readout on the performance of PHP 7 with Magento is very impressive. Very impressive. Um, you know, I think you guys all know there's a certain amount of competition between the HHBM folks and, uh, and Zend. Um, so they've certainly had a bogey in mind um, when they're working on their own performance characteristics there. And they've been very clear that uh, at least one of the two sailboats on that lake is racing. Um, we're also coming out with uh, HHBM compatibility in Magento 2. Uh, and we see some, some nice performance improvements there as well. So that's the performance side, right? How fast can we get a page back to the consumer and make it usable? The other question is under how much load can we maintain that kind of performance or scale, right? And can we scale in a cost-effective and affordable way? So um, Magento 1 had a, certainly on the admin side, had well-known issues around concurrent users doing certain things, people updating products, uh, people managing orders through the admin interface. Very easy to get into a situation where you got errors, deadlocks, that kind of thing. Um, so one of our goals for Magento 2 is to kind of eradicate those sorts of problems. Um, and we also wanted to be able to improve our, uh, improve our throughput right, on the front end of it. And so a couple of things that we've done um, <laughs> We added compatibility for MySQL cluster. Uh, we added a standalone database for our order management system. We were in the process, sorry, of building that for order management. And um, we added a standalone database for checkout. Right? So you can have separate databases for each one of these activities. 
you don't have your catalog and people that are browsing up front impacting checkout performance or vice versa. So the numbers there have been pretty good for us. Um, if you look at when we were able to return to orders per hour, Magento 1 versus Magento 2, we've more than doubled it. Um, and if you look at what we've been able to do in catalog views per hour, it's been spectacular. And we're very proud of this set of results right here. That is impressive. Thank you guys very much for hearing me out on that. Mm -hmm. So, questions? Well, let's do kind of.